nice amplitude for that backflip. Hello folks, Just Steeper here and I am absolutely delighted to show all of you some first exclusive gameplay from upcoming extreme sports game, Riders Republic. They've kindly sent me footage highlighting different aspects of the game and it looks insane. So we're going to start with looking at some of the Bike Korea gameplay. I think one of the things everyone can see is that Ubisoft have taken a step towards arcade style tricks but set in a realistic looking world. This definitely will appeal to a larger audience and I can totally see why they've done it. As much as I love simulator games, they're just not long term and wide appealing. Based off what I can see, it looks like the player is in a freestyle challenge based off the leaderboard, point score and number of tricks left present up in the left corner. And what stands out is that there is a huge variety of tricks and rotations built into this game and this particular challenge level design is absolutely cracking. This piece of footage is titled Red Bull Hardline. So Red Bull Hardline is a real life downhill event that contains an extremely challenging course only for the bravest riders. The level design is looking superb to me. I know I've said it but it just looks great. And this may be one of the major reasons that this game is going to stand out in the industry. And not going to lie, this first person mode may just be the best we've ever seen in a sports game. Just look at it. Just look at it, folks. It's insanely smooth and you feel like you're actually navigating the course from the eyes of the character. For those of you with a VR headset, I think you're in for a treat indeed. We've been spot with more event footage and this is a Red Bull Rampage. A real life invitational free ride event that requires riders to not only navigate difficult terrain but have the ability to showcase their best technical tricks. Now what's interesting about this footage is that it starts in first person and then every time the player does a trick it switches to third person. My gut feeling is that this is intentional gameplay design in order to avoid any dizzying or disorientating effects when playing. And I'm also going to call out that the whips on the bikes look smooth as butter. I'm really enjoying all of the effort they've put into the animation of each trick. Also, what I quite like about this clip is that, even though this is somewhat of an arcadey game, you could still make it look realistic by keeping your tricks and rotations simple. Looks like it might just keep both camps happy. Those who like arcade and those who like simulation. Button. I'm ecstatic that they've brought Red Bull's Play Street to this game. This is an extraordinary slope style course event that weaves in between urban environments. I'm going to sound like a record on repeat here guys, but my god. The level design just appears to be so consistent with no limits applied. The snowboard's gameplay is looking great. There's the iconic holy krill grab in this footage. The presses on the rails look good and I can even see there are animations for pre-winding before rotating. You can see your character just start to wind up before releasing the rotation. Folks, they've done a good job with this, I think. They've done a good job indeed. The big boys in snowboarding themselves, Burton, have their own event called Burton Grove. It appears to be a freestyle course with a ton of unique wooden features and even features a slingshot to squeeze between. Now that's a photo mode moment that you need to capitalize on. What I like from what I've seen so far is that it looks like there is hardly any duplication or recycling of props and features within the world. Everything has been designed to stand out. This is a wingsuit point challenge which is set at night time and the visuals look bright, wacky and awesome. For those who've played Steep you can see that this is just a total redesign of wingsuit gameplay. If you look at the bottom right corner you can see there is now a slow mode feature. It's not used in this clip but I imagine it will allow you to make some quick maneuvers whilst either slowing down time or slowing down your racer. This footage is another points based challenge from Bryce Canyon as highlighted at the top of the screen. It looks like a challenge that is going to test your proximity skills throughout whilst also giving you bonus rings to fly through. We see a bit of the slow mode mechanic at play as the player is feathering the function to gain a little height here and there and get between all the rock formations. And uh, I have to say, it's a pretty fashionable wingsuit. 
And to round off the air sports, we of course have the rocket wingsuit in presumably a race challenge. This again looks to have a total rework from what we have in steep. There is now a limited boost button on the right bottom corner. I think you'll have to be a bit more wise with thinking about when to use it. As you can see, it increases the top speed. Personally, I think this looks good, it looks smooth, and the handling looks a bit more like a conventional flying game. This footage is titled Air Funky, and it looks to showcase a crazy looking wingsuit. This thing looks like your classic folded up paper plane with a bit of graffiti on it, which let's face it, it's quite hilarious to be in a game. I have to say, it looks like this game is truly and really trying to capture a huge audience by having both serious and fun appeal. Trick's battle looks so, so, so much fun. It's wacky, wild and over the top, but also it looks like it's going to be competitive with a lot of mechanics to consider. Now, the best way to describe this game mode is that it looks a bit like Tony Hawk's Graffiti Mode or that Splatoon game. Riders appear to do tricks on features which then make those features turn the colour of the respective team, which is red and blue in this case. There are tons of features in this arena and there's even a mini-map in the top left corner which outlines all of the rails and jumps that you must hit. Teams are ultimately looking to score the most points as you can see in the top of the footage. You'd think it'd be as simple as who can be the most efficient in churning out the most tricks, but if you look closer, there are mechanics to consider. The first one is the random laser beam. After repeating footage back over and over, I am guessing that this is a multiplier boost for sticking in close proximity to a teammate. You can see that the beam is present when they're close to teammates and the scoring bars turn blue. When they're too far away, the scoring bar turns back to yellow as seen in other gameplay footage. Now the next mechanic to consider is the District on Fire feature. You can see in the footage that there are game prompts that the crab and serpent districts are on fire and now the features say times 5 on them. My best guess is that this arena is split into areas and once you capture enough features in a certain area, you will have a boost in score for a certain time. The emphasis in this game mode is surely going to be teamwork with all these little mechanics, and I really do feel like there could be a potential competitive scene for this. I simply cannot wait to see the potential of this, folks. I really can't wait. This is footage of a mass racing game, and it looks like pure carnage on the mountain. There are 34 players in this instance of a mass race. We know there is the potential for over 50 races based off the Ubisoft site, but with 34, it's already looking wild. We can see they're all trying to battle for the leading position and a bit of a pack forms with the big group. Interestingly, we also see there are checkpoints in the game which force you to another sport. And I feel like this is a really interesting gameplay design since it means you'll have to be good at all of the sports and not just your favourite one if you want to come out on top. In the rocket wingsuit section we see there are lots of barriers and obstacles to navigate around. And personally, based off what I can see, I think this is going to be the fun, not so serious multiplayer game mode. Overall, it's huge and full of what I describe as Takeshi Castle or Fall Guys style moment with obstacles such as tires and floating panels for your player to avoid. We even see glimpses of the rocket skis and a jet powered bike of sorts. This is definitely one of those modes that will have memorable and wow moments with your friends to reflect back on. We've seen a lot of the sports gameplay and multiplayer modes, but it also seems like there'll be an investment on exploring the world when you're not doing insane trick-based challenges or trying out mass races. We can see the players going to a point on the map that has a purple icon that looks like an eye. When they get near, they get a prompt that states it's a landmark called Angel's Landing. It goes into a cinematic sequence and gives a quick, brief explanation of that landmark. I really like the look of this, it gives that extra depth to the world and there's a lot of players who are just going to be roaming around exploring and this is right up their alley. Also in this footage is something that can be quite easily missed. After the cinematic of Glacier Point, there are two major gameplay features. First, 
there is a female voice stating you are listening to Wendy Smiley on Ridge Radio, which makes me speculate that there is now going to be radio stations in the game. And shortly after this radio sequence, the player then walks away and brings up what is presumably the sport selection. You can see they're walking originally, and then they rotate to a snowboard wheel and ride off. This is our first look at how switching sports will be like, and quite simply, it looks clean and simple with no animation, which is definitely the right way to do it in my opinion. The conclusion for me is one word, ambition. Ubisoft have rightfully seen that there is a huge gap in the market for an extreme sports game of this size. There is nothing like this out there and they'll be able to dominate this space if they play their cards right. They're blending arcade style gameplay with potentially the most unique looking world in the gaming industry and it looks like it will pay off. This is going to appeal to a huge audience. Some people won't like it because it's not realistic. Some people will like it because it's completely goofy. What strikes me most is that there's clearly a high level of effort and investment when you compare this to Steep or any other extreme sports title. The animations look great, the equipment looks superb, the level design looks like it's been crafted with precision and love. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is no corner cutting has taken place. My advice to them would be don't let the ambition falter after launch. Right now, it's making waves in the gaming scene and it has all the right ingredients to last many years. Folks, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you like or don't like from this footage and what you're hoping to see more of. And also giving the subscribe button a cheeky press also helps me millions. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.